Hello everyone, Johnny D here and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we did a build video and today we are going to be building an epic 1440p and 4k gaming machine. It's not only going to be a very powerful gaming machine, but it's also going to be a very power efficient gaming machine, which is something you don't often see. So in today's video, I'll break it down into a couple parts. In the first part, we'll go over the list of parts and why I chose them and we'll put it together. In the second part, we'll jump into some gaming benchmarks and 4K gameplay. And with that said, let's get to it. Well, let's start off with CPU and GPU combo, two most important pieces of this build. CPU, I went with the Ryzen 5 8400F. I chose this CPU for its power draw and high base clock. The base clock is at 4.2 gigahertz with a boost clock of 4.7 gigahertz which if you use precision boost override, you can get that up close to five. Also, it has a configurable TDP between 45 to 65 watts, which you can configure in the BIOS. It's pretty nice. Speaking of GPUs, we went with the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte by Zotac. Now I chose this for its total power draw. So it has a total power draw of 165 watts, which in comparison to like a 7700 XT or a 7800 XT, which runs at 245 watts and peaks out at 280 watts on the 7800 XT, that's a pretty good power draw. And even comparing it to a 7600, which will peak out at about 194 watts, this is gonna peak out at 165, which is really power efficient. So it has one 8-pin connector, the AV1 Kodak, 128-bit memory BIOS. It runs on eight PCI Express lanes, has a boost clock of 2,595 megahertz out of the box. So these two components make a really great power efficient and great performing pair. Motherboard, we went with the MSI Pro B650M-A Wi-Fi. Now this is 8,000 series ready, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, brand new, it's about $156, but I did pick this up on Amazon Renewed for $119. So I did save myself like $36 right there, which is, which is important if you can save some money. And if you don't mind going with like refurbished. For the storage, we went with the XPG 2 terabyte Gaming X S70 Blade. This has uh, read speeds up to 7,400 megatransfers per second. It's a relatively, it's an actually very fast drive and it's going to serve us well today. All right, so for the cooler, uh, I did end up switching out the cooler for the Purist Assassin 120 Mini Black. Um, I went with this for a couple of reasons. Only 135 millimeters high, so it doesn't really press up against the glass like a standard air cooler will. will. It has a 1500 RPM fan speed and also has six heat pipes, which really keeps the CPU cool. And that's exactly what we want. We want the CPU to stay as cool as possible, maintain those high uh, boost clocks. For the RAM, shout out to uh, a Trident, Trident Z5, the Neo RGB. It's the same, same speed, it's 6,000 megahertz. It's CL30 DDR5 and you know, I think it looks a little better. For the, for the case, we went with the Cooler Master Q300L uh, V2 Micro ATX Tower. Uh, it's got a magnetic pattern, dust filter, USB 3.2, Gen 2x2, tempered glass, you know, cooler max up to 155 millimeters, GPU max up to 360 millimeters, fully ventilated airflow, has a Type C connector on the front. Now, this only does come with one included fan, so we're going to add a couple of fans to it. So uh, two 140 millimeter fans uh, to the front from Arctic. Um, just black, no nonsense, no ARGB. Keep it nice and simple. And uh, these 140 millimeter fans are going to move a lot of air, keeping that PC really cool. Power supply. We went with an MSA, MSI MAG A750GL PCIe 5 ready. Uh, so that is good. It comes with that um, ATX 3.0 compatibility. So if you do go with a 40 series card and it has that connectivity already built in, you don't have to use the included 
connector with it as well. And this is gold rated, so uh, efficiency is going to be really good, and that's important in today's build. Uh, add in a uh, LCD screen, a 2.1 inch round LCD screen that I picked up uh, on Prime Day for I think $25. I mean, currently this particular model is back up to $71, but for $25, you can't go wrong. It gives you temperatures. It looks good. as a has a nice little aesthetic to it as well. So uh, that was the final build list. Uh, I'm not going to go through a detailed build guide on this build, but I will show the final product. And then uh, let's hop into some gameplay. So here we are on Horizon Forbidden West. Um, let's go into the settings. And uh, let's look at the display. Let's start off with 1440p. We'll apply the settings. And then we'll move over to graphics. Uh, let's start off on very high. And let's see what we got here. So 1440p, very high. I mean, it looks really good. Uh, our graphics card's at 67 degrees. We're at 95 to 98% on the GPU. And uh, about 36% on the uh, CPU. Temperature of 43. And if you look at the wattage, we're pulling under 200 watts, about 185 watts. Goes up and down a little bit. But the color is amazing. We are recording on this as well, so you will see the thing dip a little bit. You lose about 7 to 10 FPS on that. I mean, and it looks really, really nice. All right, so let's uh, let's bump up the uh, resolution. Let's put this up to 4K. There we have it. Apply. And yes. And then let's go into graphics. And let's just move that down to high. And as you can see, we're about 61, 60 FPS. Now, keep in mind, we're recording, so we are losing 7 to 10 FPS on a recording. But it is very smooth, good gameplay. It looks gorgeous. It's a dead I mean, machine. the colors are amazing. It must be a bristleback. Maybe errand. It must be chain scrape. Drew said I could get my bow upgraded in there. Might be able to tinker with my other gear too. Yeah, I look at the water. So again, you know, very playable experience here. Uh, and the power draw again, under 200 watts in the power draw. And if you look at the total system power, we're at 243 watts on total system power. Now that's pretty efficient. If you're using something like a 7800 XT paired with like a 13600K. We'd be up around four or five hundred watts total system draw right now, uh, so this is this is great. All right, here we are in Ratchet and Clank. Let's go take a look at the settings. Uh, so uh, here we are. We're at fourteen forty p. We are at custom right now. Let's go very high, fourteen forty p. Go back and. At 1440p, very high while we're recording. We're at 83 frames per second. It's pretty smooth, looks really good. And 
let's see. I think we can do a little bit better on that frame right. So let's go to settings. Let's go to let's go to high settings. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Uh, okay, let's go to graphics. So we got frame trend on, upscale, balanced. And here we go. So here we are, 85 frames per second. Looking really good. So we're at 66 degrees on the GPU, 98%. Uh, the CPU, we're at 60 degrees and 92% uh, total wattage under 200 watts, 139 watts on the GPU, 45 watts on the CPU. Um, pretty efficient. Total power draw here is 243 again, fluctuating between 240 and 243 uh, for the total power draw on, on the uh, PC. So this is looking really, really good here. But let's see if we can move this up to 4K. Let's move this up to 4K. We got upscale quality balance. Let's move that down to performance. Go over to graphics. Let's move that to medium. And uh Apply changes here. Confirm. Oh, I probably didn't apply changes last night. And here we go. We are at 77 frames per second. At 4K, we're at medium here. Um, we probably could push it to high. Uh, I think we'll try that in a minute. Very smooth. Looking really nice. Again, the power draw is under 200 watts between the CPU and the GPU. Power draw on the system, 250 watts on the entire system right now. It's looking really, really good. Back into settings. And let's see if we can push this to high. Go back. Right, we're at high. Let's skip the cinematic. This is definitely I mean, looking pretty good here. 75 FPS, 4K, recording, high settings. I mean, pretty, pretty nice. I mean, nice, nice smooth play. And again, under 200 watts total power draw between the CPU and the GPU. Uh, it looks really, really nice. Very smooth. We're at 38.2 milliseconds. I mean... Again, 30, this 40, again, this 4060 punching way above its weight class and uh, really great gaming experience here. All right, moving on. Here we are in Cyberpunk. So here we are in Cyberpunk. We are a quick preset. We're at ultra settings. Uh, we're gonna start off at 1440p. Um, and let's, uh, let's see how she looks here. So. 1440p ultra settings are at 82, 83 FPS. Keep in mind, we are recording also. So let's see what she looks. I mean, so far, so good. Looking really good. I feel like the colors could be better. My driving could be better as well. But 1440p ultra settings, we're getting 78, 80 FPS, uh, which is pretty good, nice and smooth. Lanes 
12.9 milliseconds. That's that's fantastic. So everything's looking really, really good here. No stutters, really smooth, pretty responsive. Um, again, we're about 190 watts on this game between the CPU and GPU. Temperatures are good, 56 on, on the CPU, 69 degrees on 4060 Ti. And, you know, looks really, really good here. I think we can do, let's go ahead and uh, go back into the settings. And uh, let's go ahead and bump this up to 4K. Fly. Graphical. Let's drop the graphics high. And uh, let's uh, use DLSS Super Resolution. Frame Gen is on. Hit Apply. And uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, well, there we are. We're at 4K. High settings, 66, 62 FPS. Again, we're recording, so we're losing, you know, 7 to 10 FPS on that. And it's looking really good. Not bad. Colors are nice, but I think we could probably do a little better. So let's go back in, try performance, apply, there we go, that's better, there we are, so high settings, performance, and then we're recording, doesn't look too bad, looks kind of nice. So again, uh, if we wanted a little bit more frame rate, I think we could drop this down to medium. And that's probably where I would play it. So let's do that. Let's drop that down to medium. Settings. Medium. Resolution, auto, apply. And yeah, I think that's where I would play it. I mean, it looks it looks really good now. Um, four is looking just a tad uh, sluggish. But here we go, 64 over that 60. Now it feels a lot better. And uh, we're running at 125 watts on the GPU and 40 watts on the CPU at 4K. And uh, you know, it's looking really nice. can't drive though but again here you have this 4060 ti which was designed for, four, for 1080p and 1440p gaming punching way way above its weight class and you know there you have it guys all right well there you have it uh 1440p 4k gaming machine that's pretty efficient you know total system power draw 250 watts max uh, GPU is only pulling 140 to 150. The CPU is, uh, you know, peaked out at 55 watts there. So, you know, a really, really efficient gaming machine. So, with that said, guys, if you get value out of this video, why not click subscribe so you get notified when I create new content. It also really helps out the channel when you like and subscribe. And with that said, you all have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye now.